Hey everybody, welcome back to Taskmaster is Wonderful. I'm Eric and today I'm talking about Taskmaster Series 15 Episode 5, Old Honkfoot. As always, this series stars Taskmaster himself, Greg Davies, his assistant Alex Horn, and the contestants are Frankie Boyle, Ivo Graham, Jenny Eclair, Kyle Smith-Bino, and Mae Martin. Before we get into the the events of this episode, let's take a closer look at Frankie Boyle. Frankie is from Scotland and has been performing stand-up comedy since 1995. He has been on many television programs over the years, including being a regular panelist on the first seven series of Mock the Week, which was hosted by the winner of Series 14, Dara O'Brien. All right, here we go. We start with the prize task. And to talk about that prize task, please welcome Casey from Taskmaster Down Under Podcast with this week's Taskmaster Down Under Podcast prize task report. This is Casey bringing you the Taskmaster Down Under Podcast weekly prize task report. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> so this week, the prize task was the luckiest thing. And look, I really enjoyed all of the prize tasks, really. But I loved that May threw everything at it. I really, really appreciated Ivo this week, though. Just the fact that he dragged in something from the previous week uh, from Frankie and thought, yep, I'm using that. I'll top it. Just so funny. Really appreciated it. And he's got his degree. What's my luckiest thing? I thought about this today, actually, and this is 100% true, not made up. I feel lucky or I'm, like I'm going to have a good day if I see some kind of falconry bird flying around in the wild on my day, which I used to see fairly often. So I think I'd have to bring in some kind of like taxidermied eagle or falcon or something like that. I don't think Greg would score that very highly. Um, I think I'm looking at one to two points at the most, but... At the moment, that's my luckiest thing. So there we go. Thanks, Casey. I think if you had a story of a specific time that a hawk um, brought you luck, um, you, could, you could score really well. Or even better, if the story was about your particular uh, taxidermied falcon bringing luck and then, uh, then ending up in its uh, current state. But um, not so not so lucky for the Falcon. Um, anyway, a couple of the other prizes that um, Casey didn't mention. Um, Jenny brought in a photo of her with her grandson, who is very lucky to have her as a Nana. Frankie left a bag that um, was given to him by a fan. It has his picture with a bunch of animals. Some of them mentioned it as act. Um, as it's, a, it's a very interesting bag, but, uh, he had it in his luggage for the rest of that tour and it went really well. So he's, uh, taken it on tour with him, uh, ever since then. Um, and then, uh, Kyle brought a scratch card that was purchased by the luckiest woman in Britain. Um, she has won over 70,000 pounds since 2012 and is considered britain's luckiest woman oh you know what i uh what would i bring i would have brought a box of lucky charms because they're delicious but then i would probably have run into the argument of it not being a lucky thing but being a collection of lucky things and also that they're just representations of lucky things they're not actually lucky or are they i i think i always have a better day a more charmed day <laughs> When I've had a bowl of Lucky Charms in the morning, I should get those more often. Uh, my scores would have been five points to Frankie, four to Kyle, three to May, two to Ivo, and one to Jenny. Greg's scores were very different from that. Um, five points to Kyle, four points to May, three points to Frankie and Ivo, 
and two points to Jenny. So it, at least we agreed that a simple photograph of a baby is not a very lucky thing. That brings us to film task number one. Uh, we had a, a nice little chip tune intro and they're in the study. Uh, they have to fake something. The best fake wins. You have 20 minutes. First, we see Jenny immediately fake a heart attack and death. And then she fakes a nosebleed. It's very obviously ketchup. Not very convincing blood. Uh, Kyle makes a fake hand out of cake and eggshells. It is very bad, <laughs> but very funny. Um, and then Ivo becomes a fake mummy covered in toilet paper. And when the time is expired, it is revealed it wasn't Ivo as the mummy. It was somebody else. He just pops his head in the door to confirm that the task is complete. And oh, man. Alex is blown away. Everybody in the studio is blown away. Ivo is so proud, as he should be. It was one of my favorite moments of this episode, of this series so far. And then May had a fake talk show in the lab, but it turned out it was a sort of uh, 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 a psychic reading sort of uh, TV show. <laughs> Um, it was called Crossing to the Other Side with May Martin, uh, and they played Medium Martin. Uh, the story of Horace the Cat being frustrated with a toy fox that Alex had freaked him out a bit, a little bit, and then at the end of the reading, they asked for some money. It turns out that May found out all this information by calling Alex's wife and his mom. Uh, this this reminded me of, uh, I think it was Jessica Nappett who also called Alex's wife and got his pin for his bank card. Then we got a, a very beautifully done uh, short film about Frankie Boyle's uh, death having uh, set out into the river um to meet his end uh and then we see him emerging from the shore uh and running along uh the riverbank in his underwear across the other side of the river very very funny um i however did not score that the best i had may and ivo in first place with five points each I had Frankie with four points, Jenny with two points, and Kyle with one point because that fake hand is not fooling anybody. Um, Greg's scores were a bit more generous, I'd say. Frankie got the full five points. Ivo and May got four points. Or I guess I, I was more generous. I gave two people five points. And then Jenny and Kyle got two points each. Up next was film task number two. Uh, they were on location with a bunch of signs uh, all around this warehouse room. Um, and they were all dressed in a one-man band outfit. Uh, this included carrying a guitar, having a harmonica um, propped up uh, out in front of their, their faces, uh, a drum on their back, a horn, a honk foot, on their left foot and a, uh, uh, a, a tambourine or some bells. It wasn't a full tambourine. It was just some bells on their right foot. I think that was all of the instruments. There's five of them. Anyway, play the instrument indicated by the lights. Each time you play an instrument correctly, another will be added to the sequence until you make a mistake. Longest sequence wins. There is a bonus point for the person who sounds the least worst sort of the best um some highlights uh were that uh jenny asked if if this is like an alzheimer's test and um after uh seemingly nailing the task kyle says i'm a music boy uh but then explains that uh his trouble with blowing into the harmonica at one point is because he's also an asthmatic boy Jenny got six in a row before she got one incorrect. Ivo got five. 
Um, May got out after getting nine. Uh, and Frankie also got nine. Kyle seemingly got 15, but as it turned out, uh, he only got five and then insisted on trying again. Uh, went on for 45 minutes until he got that 15, uh, 15 sequence, which did not count. So May and Frankie got first place. They got five points. Um, Jenny got three points. Kyle got two points and Ivo also got two points, but Kyle's also got a bonus point for sounding the least worst. And I'd say that's fair and is, a, I guess, kind of a reward for the dedication of sticking with it and trying and trying again for so much longer than everybody else. Then we have film task number three. It's a team task and is also the start of the controversial aspect of this episode. Um, I'll get into this more after we talk about these last two tasks. Um, okay, so this first team task. One person is a surrogate outside of the front door of the house. Inside the lab, um, the rest of the team, whether it's one or two people, um, open up the task. Um, Kyel is outside with Jenny and May in the lab. And Ivo is outside with Frankie in the lab. Salvage the most spoons. You may not leave the lab and all spoons must be salvaged with the magnet. The salvager must not remove their headwear. Most salvaged spoons brought to the lab wins. Also, from now on, you must speak in a very high-pitched voice. You have 16 minutes. Um, so the person that's outside are, is wearing a headset, uh, like a thing over their face that has a camera on it. Also a camera that's directly onto their face so that we can see them. Um, so they cannot see anything. The camera feed is going to the, the people in the lab, and they are giving the instructions to the person outside. So we start by watching Jenny and May direct Kyle. They, t uh, they tell Kyle to grope the grass at one point and also to be in the middle of the grass if you can imagine it. Uh, they describe a lot of things that are not helpful if you can't actually see anything. Um, and they do have some big trouble getting back into the lab uh, but at that point, Kyle decides to just stop listening to them and uh, feels his way back to them. Um, a total of nine spoons. Very impressive. Then we see Frankie speaking in his high voice and being responded to by Ivo in a high voice as well. He did not have to do that. Um, they kind of lose track of time. Communication isn't the best best as far as uh the the completion of the task but the the sheer number of spoons that are collected is very impressive they they got 22 spoons but unfortunately ivo decided to go into the kitchen to greedily try to grab more spoons uh, when he really needed to run to the lab and get in there before the time expired. So they got zero points, and May, Jenny, and Kyle got five points. This is a huge point disparity between these two teams. And then it's followed by the most crazily scored live task yet. I I don't know how this scoring made sense. Uh, maybe they're very confident that it was not going to happen, that the maximum points could be done. This, I, I, uh, all right, let, let's just <laughs> describe the task first. Um, the task is stuff these things in your teammate's outfit. If you're wearing a special outfit, you must stay on your spot with your hands on your head at all times. Fastest wins, um, and it's everything but the trolley. So I have a trolley that's full of things, specifically 29 things. So the team of three finishes like slightly before 
um, Ivo and Kyle. So they have to just stand there while the winning team does part two. Um, see how many things you stuffed into your teammate's outfit. If you're right, your points are doubled. If you're wrong, the other team gets your points. They have one minute to tell Alex how many. They will either get 10 points or zero points with the other team getting five. Um, so while they're doing that, they decide to just unstuff all of the, all of the things out of Kyle's uh, special outfit. Um, and while they're doing that, uh, Ivo, like, a bit too late, he starts to try to jump and get uh, stuff from his to fall out and confuse them. Um, but they guess correctly at 29. One of the objects is a birthday card that has a big 29 on it. So they could have found it out without actually counting everything. Um, so because that winning team doubled their points, they got 10 points. And the losing team, Frankie and Ivo, got zero points. Which means between these two tasks... May, Jenny, and Kyle got 15 points. Frankie and Ivo got zero. That is a huge gap. And that is reflected in the final scores for this episode. We have 28 points for May, 25 points for Kyle, 22 points for Jenny, 13 points for Frankie, and 9 points for Ivo. Ivo has less than half as many points as third place. That is, that's, that's insurmountable. Everybody else would have to completely bomb for like three episodes for Ivo to have any chance to catch up or for another crazily scored couple of, of tasks to happen in his favor. I really like this episode. There are lots of great moments in it, but that scoring aspect of it kind of sours it a little bit. Um, so I don't know. What what do you think? I think it, I, I feel like it should have just been a bonus point if they could guess. But doubling it, anytime that you're doubling points, that's creating such a huge gap. So anyway, thank you again to Casey from Taskmaster Down Under Podcast for this week's weekly prize task report. Go and follow her at TMDU Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. And you can follow this podcast, Taskmaster is Wonderful, at TIW Podcast on Twitter and Instagram as well. Go to TIWpodcast.com for more episodes as well as all the links to subscribe on your favorite podcatchers, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, or your podcatcher of choice. Just grab that RSS feed and get that in there and uh, stay tuned for more. I'll be back real soon with the next episode of Taskmaster Series 15. Be safe out there, and I'll see you next time here on Taskmaster is Wonderful. Bye!